My childhood friend and nurse, his mother's body was old. His mother was in intensive care for a month and a half. They were living together, my childhood friend, and his mother's death. His parents are separated, by the way, after his mother's death. The night he finds out, the doctor in intensive care says, we lost your mother, I'm sorry for your loss. He goes home. First, he cleans the house deeply, takes a shower, shaves his beard, gets dressed, gets ready. He goes up to the roof of the building where his mother lives. The person in the opposite building thinks he is a thief, so he videotapes him. I was very impressed. I want to ask about this because we all live in this life. We are in human bodies, and it can happen to anyone. He videotapes him. He walks around on the roof. He goes inside just in case he's a thief. He's going to report to the police, and then he comes back, and the guy threw himself. My childhood friend committed suicide and he lost his body, so two funerals came out of that house. It's a horrible thing, and you know what happened at that moment? I have read so many books and I have even edited some of your books. What if I lose my mind? What if I lose my mind and do the same thing? But this is also a doubt. I mean, that impressed me a lot, and he was so scared that he couldn't jump like that. It is in the video. First, he lies down on the roof, rolling like this, sideways. He throws himself away. His soul is leaving the body. When we experience such things, when we feel such doubts, what can we eternal spiritual beings in the human body do? We should not be affected. I read the book Fear. I devoured half of it in one night, and now I've switched to the book Death. I'm reading them both together. What would you say about that? When doubt comes, we must immediately direct it to the awakening of the intellect. The doubt is coming. When negative emotions come, you immediately direct them to the awakening of the intellect. Doubt leads to questions. So ask a question to yourself or to a friend if there is someone or to yourself and find the answer. That's how we will use doubt. For example, why did he commit suicide? We didn't write the book Suicide Psychology for nothing. And for this book, Suicide Psychology, many people I have lost count call and thank me. They say, I wanted to die. I read your book, Suicide Psychology, and I stopped committing suicide. That's how it is. So we use doubt to awaken intelligence in every negative situation. The person who wants to commit suicide wants to die. Why does he want to die, he should ask. Why do I want to die? And find an answer to that. And when he answers, new questions and new answers arise. And if he uses our books as a guide, that feeling will disappear because one comes to that point for certain reasons. He doesn't want to live. He doesn't want to live anymore because pain he is in pain. pain. Right? He throws himself off the roof to get rid of that pain, but when he does, he suffers more. And when he hits the ground, the spiritual being that comes out of the body regrets it and suffers more because there are witnesses to this. There are people who have had near-death experiences after attempting suicide, and they come back to the body and come back to life. And they are talking about it. Even at the moment of suicide, as he flies through the air, he feels regret. I wish I hadn't done it. And then, of course, when he hits the ground, suffers more because the body is damaged. Some are maimed, some survive. Some leave the body for a while and go through all those experiences. So, these things are known. One should act according to what is known and always keep the doubt. Use it to look for answers. This will awaken the intelligence and solve the problem. You will find a solution. What to do when such a feeling comes because I have witnessed it firsthand? What if I lose my mind because we are in the human body? Okay, we take evolutionary actions, but that is momentary. Don't misunderstand what I am saying. There are awakening books, enlightening books, I mean a split-second moment. What if I do the same? 
We are in the human body. Everyone has that potential. Yes, yes. Now comes the question, what if I lose my mind? With which question will you answer it? You'll say, and what is mind? And the mind, yes, you'll say, and what is mind? And when the question, what is mind, is answered, such things as losing your mind will disappear. There will no longer be a problem. When the right doubt, the right question, and the right answer are found, you can use doubts to awaken your intelligence and make your life more efficient. Why did I ask this question? Because the suicide rate is unfortunately rising among young people. So we are on the channel of young people right now. There are many people now the university exam is approaching. There is the stress of the exam, etc. Lots of suicides, even now as we speak. In how many seconds? According to statistics, mm -hmm. there is a suicide attempt every four to six seconds in the world. And 20% of those attempts are successful, meaning people die. It is that frequent and increasing, and it is increasing faster in Turkey. It is related to various reasons and conditions, the economic crisis, this and that. That's why everyone should read this book, Suicide Psychology. If you feel like, I wish I was dead, read that book immediately, because it can get deeper and can pull one entirely into it irrational situation. Thank you very much. So this body is given to us. We have to take care of it like a baby, but for what? To engage in the actions of spiritual evolution without taking karma, by dissolving karma. To leave this body in a good way, not in pain, sir. To be really conscious of every moment of our lives in order to live appreciating it. And most importantly, the author already has 91 unique works. Pick and choose. Read one of them every day. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm glad you came with a new book next month. Maybe we'll end the season with you because we're going on summer vacation now. Thank you very much, Akif Manaf.